Steve Sarator, let's get reaction to this data from Tyler Goodspeed, a fellow for the Hoover Institution. It's a good fellow. And I, I love when we say a fellow. We got distinguished fellows, good fellows. That's a whole different thing, uh, Tyler. Great movie, though. Um, and former acting chair of the Council of Economic Advisors. Uh, and Megan Green, global chief economist uh, for Kroll. The initial reaction, it was a little bit uh, muted, Megan, but, but what, what would people that want a, a, uh, a kinder, gentler Fed, what are they trading on today? Anything in there for the kinder, gentler Fed people? Yeah, you know, I would say some of the inflation data came in a tiny tick below expectations, so that's good news in terms of inflation not being as red hot as it has been, though, I, I, like I said, it was a tiny tick below. So unfortunately, I don't think there's much in this report that suggests that the Fed's going to change its position or its, its stance at all. So I would expect at least another rate hike from the Fed. Um, the real personal spending was down a bit, so you could argue maybe demand is down. That should be on the margin, disinflationary. but. It, it was right in line with expectations. So I, I think that the Fed's going to continue to hike uh, full steam ahead, at least one more, maybe two, depending on the data we get further out on how much the recent financial instability we've had actually uh, impinges on growth. So actually kills off confidence. And the March confidence data was incredibly strong. So we don't have much evidence of that. And also that the banking instability will really stem loan extension. Um, and there we just don't know. Um, it could stem it a lot, in which case that would be a, a big um, headwind for growth. But it actually might not stem loan extension much at all, in which case the economy is still pretty strong. Yep. OK, Tyler, I don't think we've seen you since we had the, uh, the events at Silicon Valley Bank and uh, and elsewhere in, in community banks. So I don't know how many mandates the Fed has. I, I can count a lot more than just two. But uh, one of the important things is, is uh, the, the stability of the financial system. So let's just say employment, full employment, price stability in terms of inflation, and financial stability. Should any of them take precedence right now? Or should it still, and I guess I'm asking you, should inflation still be the, the most important thing for the Fed? Well, I think it is a dual mandate. So it's it's maximum sustainable employment and price stability. And insofar as financial stability impacts full employment, then then they need to care about financial stability. Okay. Look, I, we, we saw this movie before in the 1970s and 1980s when you saw a series of bank failures. You saw Commonwealth Bank. You saw First Pennsylvania. You saw Penn Square. You saw Continental Illinois. And you, all the while, you had this simmering savings and loan crisis. And they all failed for slightly different reasons. But the same underlying cause was a Federal Reserve that was battling to tame inflation. And, and we saw a similar playbook back then, which is lend and extend. You have regulatory forbearance. You try to help some of the smaller institutions grow their way out of their problems. And there was a lot of sweeping problems under the rug until we get to 1986 and a full-blown savings and loan crisis. I, I kind of suspect that there will be a similar fudge today in that they won't, they'll, they'll continue, as Megan said, they'll continue to the, the fight against inflation, but not quite enough to get price stability. They'll continue a fight to achieve financial stability, but in so doing, will sweep a lot of, a lot of issues under the rug. And we'll generally get a, a, a policy fudge with a lot of policy working at cross purposes. With one hand, they'll be uh, doing QT. With another hand, they'll be increasing the money supply.